Hi, I'm Angela Nicholson and in this tutorial I'm going to show you some of the ways that you can make selections within your images. Let's start by looking at the lasso tools. I'm going to start with the first one which is just the lasso tool which is a freehand selection tool and I just use it by clicking on the image and dragging with the mouse button held down and trying to outline part of the image. See it's just moving freehand, I'm doing it fairly rough and ready. If I go back to the starting point I've got a selection made. I can undo that or delete that selection by pressing Control D. Let's look at another one of the lasso tools and if you just hold down on the lasso tool you'll see you get three options. I'm going to look at the polygonal lasso tool now. You select that. Now this works by adding a line between each of your anchor points so it so it's very good for straight edges, it's not particularly good for organic structures like this. So it's, it's good for a box for example, if I just drag it out you can see I'm getting a very angular selection and then I go back to the beginning, double click and I've got a complete selection. Again I can undo that uh, selection by just pressing Control D. Now to look at the last lasso tool. It's the magnetic lasso tool and this works by detecting edges within your image and it's quite useful for all sorts of different selections. So if I just click near the edge and drag along, I'm not holding the mouse button down, but it's automatically adding anchor points and following that quite distinct edge. And if I want to add an anchor point manually, I just click and then I can hop across to the other side, click again, start dragging up. And you can see it's doing a pretty good job actually here. If I drag out a bit, it's even still managing to stick to the side of that stem. If I just click, go across to the starting point, just click and there I've got a selection. As you can see the selection isn't absolutely perfect here but we can refine it and we can add and subtract areas from the selection. Now let's take a look at the quick selection tool which is found on the toolbar just here. This is like used like a paintbrush so we can size it to different sizes using this slider just going to make it a little bit bigger and then we paint over the object that we want to select and as you can see it's doing a pretty good job of selecting that flower without me having to worry too much but see what happens when I try to paint in this bit of the stem it's selected a bit too much of the background however if I hold the alt key down you see how the central uh, plus turns to a minus I can just paint in and it's going to remove the background and the tool actually learns as you go along so I'm just releasing the alt key and painting that f that petal in. Now the sensible thing here of course would be to um, make the brush a bit smaller and to zoom in so I, I've got a, a bit of a closer view of what I'm working at but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing so I'm going to hold the key down, the alt key down again and then just paint in towards the flower. Release I'm painting. It's not doing too bad a job but as I say it needs to go in a bit closer so if I just go to the magnify tool bring it up to 100% I've now got a much better view of what's going on. I'm going to make the brush a bit smaller and I'm going to get rid of that area so now I can paint. As you see it's doing quite a good job. Looking at the whole image now you can see that I've pretty much selected the area that I was interested in. But the selection isn't absolutely perfect. There's a couple of bits of uh, background which have crept in here and I need to refine my selection. And I can do that by selecting refine edge up here. Now you'll notice straight away that this makes it much easier to see what I've got selected and you can see there's a few little notches out of the stem and there's a few bits of background um, that have been included in my uh, in my selection. And there are seven different view modes that are designed to make it uh, easier to see what's going on. You select those using this uh, drop down option here or you can press F on your keyboard. So if we go to this one that's the marching ants as we had before. Overlay and actually um, I found the one that we were using on white quite useful. 
So now let's start looking at how to refine the edge. Uh, as you can see here, there's an option to check Smart Radius, and uh, Photoshop will do all the assessment for us, but really you're better off setting the radius yourself um, because it doesn't always get it right. The key is to remember to use a fairly small radius when you've got quite bold, strong edges, and a larger radius when you've got uh, little fine hairs and feathers, things like that, that sort of blend almost into a background. So I'm going to uncheck that, and as you can see the radius goes up to 250 pixels, but I'm going to keep it quite small at just 0.5. And then I'm going to paint in where that blue is, and as you can see it just disappears. And there, and then let's try this stem. Not done such a good job there. Try again. Now it hasn't done quite such a good job there, but if I hold Alt down, I can just paint in that area. There we go, let's come back. So you just need to keep working away. If you want to zoom into the image, and it's usually a good idea, just click on the magnify option here, and then click on your image and you'll get a better view of what's going on. It just takes a couple of seconds to render. And now you know what you're going to tackle. You select the brush again, and just paint where there's a problem. Hold Alt down if you make a mistake. Or Photoshop makes a mistake in some cases, and get it to correct itself. When you're using the Refine Edge controls, it's worth using the Decontaminate Colours option, as this helps to remove some of the colours from the background that you might encounter. You just select the tool and paint in, and let it do its work. I'm just going to re reduce the brush size a little, and carry on painting. So there we are, you just carry on going around the image until you've perfected it. But as you can see, it's a lot quicker than trying to do that all manually. Use these options here under Output 2 to determine what you want to do with your selection. So you could make it into a new layer, a new layer with a layer mask, or even a new document, or a document with a layer mask. I'm going to go for a new layer with a layer mask. And then when I'm happy, I'll just click OK. So before I finish, I'm just going to take a quick look at my image as it uh, fits on the screen and have a look at the different view options. Let's have a look at the marching ants. You can see it's fitting a bit closer to the, uh, to the petals and to the stem now. And if I go to on layers, I'm quite happy with that selection. So I'm going to hit OK. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add areas and subtract areas from your selection. So I'm going to start by making a selection using the elliptical marquee tool. So if I just click and drag it down, you'll see I can select an ellipsis. Now if I hold the shift key, you'll notice that a plus appears just next to the, the cursor. And if I drag that down, so it overlaps the existing selection, there, I've now got a bigger selection. I'm just going to remove the last uh, selection by pressing Control Z. And now I'm going to hold down the Alt key to bring up a minus sign. And I'm going to drag an ellipsis. And you can see I've eaten a bit out of my existing selection. I can do that again. And I just make the selection smaller. Now, if I hold Alt, and shift down at the same time as using my selection tool, you'll see that a cross has appeared next to the cursor. And I can drag it, and all I've selected is the intersection of those two selections. And this is a really useful way of creating different shapes. 